Oh, you can't stop. Oh. Are you on? Yep, go. When the uh, Biograph Company came to Cuddyback, Bill, their first time, they came on the uh, little old two-train-a-day branch of the own W to the station. Far, uh, the Mr. Fred Moore would meet them at the uh, station with the E.R. Thomas flyer and uh, Carrie Bitzer and uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bitzer and uh, Griffith and the... Uh, Pickfords, and the rest would walk up to the hotel, which is about a little over half a mile. And when they came up there, uh, Mother would meet them on the uh, porch and wave her apron and say, I'm glad to see you come. She also did the same thing when they left and said, uh, I'm glad to see you go. Well, then uh, Mr. Powell, who was there too, he registered them, and the front room went to Griffith and the one across the hall went to the Pickfords, and the rest were spread out. If they had the whole company there, there would be times when there would be four men in a room even, and sometimes sleeping on the porch, which was Hold protected by <coughs> Now, you want to go? Go, go, go. Uh, when they left for location, the flyer took the principal actors into it, and uh, the rest were taken in a hay wagon driven by Mr. Alton Cuddyback, and uh, Lester Predmore followed with the prop wagon as his own horse, Jerry. Uh, the uh, first picture that was made was the Mended Loot, which was taken up on the Neversink River, in which they built a whole Indian, uh, ca uh, Indian uh, hmm. village. Now, as soon as I click, as soon as I sit down, then we'll stop. Okay. Then go. Uh, well, the first uh, time that they came, the pictures came to uh, Cuddyback, Bill, uh, my father would meet the uh, stars and important people at the station, be Mary Pickford, Body Pickford, B. W. Griffith, Mr. and Mrs. Bitzer would be in the E.R. Thomas and go up toward the hotel. And the other people in the cast would straggle along behind them. And when they arrived at the hotel, Mother was always there to greet them and say, I'm glad to see you come. And then, too, when they left, she would be there to say, I'm glad to see you go. Uh, then the rooms were assigned. Uh, D.W. Griffiths received the first room in front of the uh, wow. hotel. Cut. Yeah. No, we don't need that. Go ahead. Early in the morning, they would again go out to location, and uh, Mr. Bitzer, Mr. Griffith, and uh, Mary, Bobby Heron, would go with the ho with the automobile, and uh, followed by the hay wagon driven by Mr. Cullibank for the rest of the cast, and following that would come the uh, prop wagon, which was driven by myself and uh, and Jerry, my horse would trot along behind with the props. Uh, this particular morning that I'm talking about is when they made the mended loot up in the Neversink River, where a whole Indian village had been built under the supervision of uh, Dark Cloud, who was a thoroughbred England, uh, Indian. I think that's it. Let's get... You want that? Uh, one of the outstanding pictures taken at Cullybank, though, was uh, the Squaw's Love. In this Indian picture, uh, Mabel Norman played the part of a wildflower, and her opponent was Silver Fawn. These two girls have a quarrel on the top of a high bank of the Neversink, in which Wildflower tries to stab a Silver Fawn. Okay, I spoiled it, didn't I? No, don't worry about it. Silver Fawn uh, stabs at Wildflower and uh, she throws herself in a back dive in which she misses a ledge below and lands into the river successfully. At this time there were three cameras taking this scene, which was something new in photography. And uh, the film turned out very successfully and Mary was wished back to the hotel where she was Mabel, Mabel. 
He said Mary. Tr say it again. Uh, and uh, Mabel Norman was whisked back to the hotel where she was had a warm drink at the mission bar. Sorry. Sorry. Well, outside of taking the movies outside, there was a rehearsal in the hotel, in the dining room, put on by Dark Cloud, where he taught them how to do a real Indian war dance. And at other times, when the rain kept the cast in, there was uh, plenty of card games, and at night they played cards, and uh, some nights, uh, Griffith would uh, have my father with the red car take them down to Port Jervis or below Milford to a roadhouse down there where there was music. And then uh, at other times the uh, in the dining room, Mr. Hedlund had his spiritualist table going. And there was all kinds of table raising and rapping. And one night they heard a sound coming on the ceiling, which they uh, even Hedlund himself couldn't account for it. But they found out that it was Mr. Griffith hammering with his shoe to keep quiet down there. <laughs> the way that uh, Cuddyback Bill was discovered by the Biograph Company was due to the fact that their president, J.J. J. Kennedy, had stayed at the Cuddyback Inn in previous summers. And uh, he was very impressed with the mountains and the lakes and the canal and the rivers in which they could use in their film. The Biograph Company would arrive at the little station, which had two trains a day. It would be met by my father with the Thomas Flyer, and in the tat car went Mary Pickford uh, and Lottie Pickford, Mr. and Mrs. Spitzer, and D.W. Griffith. The rest of the company followed him up, straggling along a little over a half a mile to the hotel. And uh, when they arrived at the hotel, they were met my mother out there waving her apron at them, saying that uh, she was glad to see them come. But she also waved when they left, saying, I'm glad to see you go. Then the rooms were assigned by Mr. Powell. He had been there ahead of them. And uh, D. W. Griffith was placed in the one room with a private bath, and across the hall was Mary and Lottie, and the rest of the, of the uh, rooms were uh, allotted to uh, different ones. Sometimes it got as far as four men in a room, but uh, the house was always crowded, and uh, yet they seemed to like it there because it was a different thing from New York. Uh, when it, uh, in the Indian pictures, it was quite a problem to get the makeup on the characters. And in fact, in the hotel, the only makeup room they had was the uh, uh, bathrooms and uh, so we had a building across the street called Tammany Hall and Tammany Hall became the makeup room especially for the men when they made up as Indians because the war paint got as much on the walls as it did on the character. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the company wanted to uh, make a film called The Spirits of 1776, and there was an old fort dating back to the Revolutionary War down on the uh, property of a man called by the name of Godifoy. His estate was immense, and uh, my father didn't think that he would let them on the land, but he took Mr. Griffith down there, and Mr. Godifoy and Mr. Griffith became very, very friendly almost at once, and he opened a whole estate to him down there. And the, sp and the uh, movie was made about this fort, and uh, Godefroy even got out food and uh, a drink called Shandygaff for them. He also supplied the, when I mentioned the horses? Horses. Uh, he even furnished horses for this picture for them down there at this time. Go. Uh, early in the morning sometimes, Mr. Griffith and Mr. Bitzer and father would go out looking for new locations and they wanted this location especially for 1776 and father drove them down and they found this fort on the Godefroy uh, property which they afterward used. Hi Bill, what's happening? I'm glad to dwell, we're sitting here trying to make a film and uh, we're going up to the mountains to do the shooting now. 
And we got more film than we thought we had in there. Because we could have filmed something else somebody was saying. And all this film is being wasted. Are you going to take films up there? Yeah, we're going to shoot some film up there, too. If I can show you what to Cut I'll it. I'll get you up into that. Yeah. Mary Pickford was one of the most gracious women that ever came to Cuddybagville. Except one year when she had got a little artistic temperament. And that was during the, after having been up there for about seven years. And uh, at the table, she didn't, she didn't like the food at one time. And uh, uh, Mr. Kirkwood said, who was then, Mr. Kirkwood said, now Mary, she says, look, the food was good enough for you when you were back here when they first came up here. And he says, it's the same food. He says, you better eat it. I think it was a case of artistic temperament. Right? Did you take that? Yeah, we got it. Good. <laughs> okay, say anything that comes to you. Uh, anything else that we should know about it? Of course we were. I'll come. <laughs>